because I am sitting next to Dr. Kulkarni, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, take this opportunity to start the discussion with you. Uh, jam integration, in a way, has been uh, you know pioneers in, in introducing innovations in uh, irrigation, and uh, they are very well recognized for for their work in in, in drip irrigation. Uh, but not many people. <coughs> outside the general irrigation system and the business, every business uh, world would know that uh, the innovations that uh, general irrigation has worked on are, are well beyond the irrigation. So uh, why don't you share some of your uh, innovations beyond irrigation that, uh, that you have uh, worked on and pioneered in India? Yeah, thank you. Uh, you may be aware by this time the, you know, the house situation which we are facing in the country with respect to drought you know, in most of the states of course. Maybe because of climate change or maybe because of mismanagement of resources, but it is happening. Now, uh, Nilotpal has very nicely uh, put in the required background with respect to you know what is going to happen uh, not only in the world but specifically for India. Uh, now the days will come where we will require a very high resource use efficiency <coughs> and what are the resources which go into agriculture? Most important being the water and in India we get water only in monsoons. Beyond monsoons there is hardly any water available, particularly in uh, southern peninsula. And uh, most of the rivers, they dry up beyond monsoon and we don't have any water. The water tables are going down. Uh, UFO transportation rates are very, very high because of high heat. And uh, people forget about agriculture, they are not getting water for drinking. And hence, it's required to have very water efficient agriculture. I'm not going to speak about drip irrigation, which is our product, but I'm going to give you some facts why it is important to save water. Just to give you an example of sugarcane, you must be reading in newspaper also whether we should grow sugarcane or not. But the fact is that 62% of the available water in irrigation is going for 3% area of sugar cane. So it's a criminal waste which is happening. Should we grow so much of sugar cane? And should we grow by just giving excess water, flood water, where water use efficiency is hardly 30-35%. If you consider dams which are uh, constructed, they are all dried up, it's hardly uh, 3 to 5 percent, at the most 10 percent water, which is a dead water present in most of these dams. And even that water is used for only drinking and not for agriculture. Most of the losses in blue water, that is water which gets collected into the storage system, you know, it's, it's, it's going as seepage, evaporation losses are stolen by, uh, you know, those who are politically strong. They just uh, steal away the water. So a lot, lot of things happen in water. So how do we challenge this? How, how, how do we uh, use this? Now you see Israel or main, even other many countries where the rainfall, annual rainfall is hardly 100, 150 mm as against India average of about 7 to 800. Even in Maharashtra the average is around 800. Even during drought period, we get something like 400 or 500 mm of rainfall. May not be throughout the year, but it is uh, 20 days in, in a year, you know. All the rain comes, uh, rainy days are hardly 20 days. So all that 400 mm comes in 20 days. So what is required is how do we store in situ in the fields. So a lot of rain water harvesting. See, we have been exploiting wells and uh, you know, through canals and all water, but we are not recharging. Do you know out of the total water which is received in India, only 30% is usable? Rest is all is surface runoff, close to the sea or uh, evaporated. 
most of the dams which have been constructed, if you calculate the water is efficiency till the field level is hardly 30-35%. But we have technology, we have the, you know, uh, solutions for all these things. When Israel can do with 150 mm of rain, why not India with four times more rainfall? But I think some uh, orientation in planning is required. So, <coughs> like we are doing a project, first time in the world actually, 25,000 hectare in Karnataka, called Ramkal project. It's a total integrated irrigation solution. You know, what the innovation which we are talking in irrigation. There, you know, what we are doing, no open canal uh, conveyance of water. It's all through pipes. And then every 200 farmers there is a sum where the water is stored, which is very near to the farm. And again from there it is supplied to the farm through pipe system. And at farm gate there is a wall which operates on solar sensor. And every field is with drip irrigation or sprinkler irrigation. The soil moisture security is achieved through sensor system. And these are our solar based sensors. So they control the moisture levels. As soon as the moisture level falls below the field level, then the wall opens, starts irrigation. When it is saturated, automatically wall closes. 24 by 7 water is available all <coughs> 12 months. And depending upon crop, they can uh, use that water programming. The water use efficiency in such integrated system is something like 85% as against about average 35 percent from our traditional irrigation system. This is a big innovation which we are doing in this case. Then another innovation which I would like to say that is there is a rainfall everywhere. It's not that it's totally dry, 100 percent dry. Now whenever rain is there, out of the total rain which is uh, receiving in that field, only 30 percent is being used. Rest is going west. Surface runoff, subsurface runoff, evaporation. Now, if farmer, actually, government is having this program of rainwater harvesting, farm ponds, and then, uh, you know, like recharging of bore wells, recharging of dug wells. During monsoon period, if you are able to collect water by recharging method through rainwater harvesting in farm ponds or all these systems, and then use it, even if you are able to give critical irrigation beyond monsoon, three or four critical irrigation at right stage, the productivity increases by 30%. I mean, these kind of measures are required. Soil moisture security is another issue where a lot of technology is available where you can in situ conserve the water. So I, there are other technologies I will talk later. Sure, but, sure. Uh, I wanted to give more emphasis on water because we are facing a lot of, uh, you know, crisis in this. No, I, I, I think uh, very pertinent point and, uh, you know, the issue of water is very well documented in India. Actually, even though I don't share his cynicism, uh, I think everybody, uh, this is the time when we should actually refer to the work done by P. Sainath on, on water, why everybody loves it drought. So, thanks, thanks a lot for, you know, sharing some of the innovations that have uh, been carried out by uh, Jan irrigation. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Mal, we have, uh, you know, you have recently uh, started uh, something in the field of uh, uh, agri equipment, uh, you know, extension of agri equipment to, to small and marginal farmers, which uh, I have heard from some of the people saying that it's it's parallel to uh, what Uber is doing, uh, you know, it's, it's akin to being an Uber for uh, tractors. So, uh, why don't you share, uh, you know, uh, something about your business and, and the kind of innovation uh, EM3 is doing. Thank you, Dilopal. And uh, with your permission, may I uh, make just three or four comments on your presentation? Please, please. Uh, just for amplification purposes before I get into EM3. Uh, you you spoke about uh, the gravity of the problem insofar as food is concerned. I think that's a that's an extremely uh, serious uh, problem that we are seeing. Equally serious, if we were to change the lens through which we see farming, there's something called uh, the farmer, right? And uh, 
if you see it through the farmer lens, the number of suicides, the the deprived circumstances, low productivity, low income, I think that's a, a much bigger issue. And as a society, obviously, we need food to survive, that, that uh, being valid. Equally important, and I will link this up to what we do, uh, is, is the fact that we need to look at the farmer himself. And one of the key challenges is how do you increase the net, not quintals or tons per acre, how do you increase the rupees per acre yield into the hand of the farmer? So you have a civilization that actually can live in a civilized manner. The second thing is, uh, we are, uh, I'm sure you're painfully aware of this, uh, except it's not in the presentation. Indian productivity is between 3% and 33% of global standards. So you, know, you have, and if you were to aggregate it, averages don't mean very much, you're looking at a 300% upside in terms of productivity. In spite of the best sun, the best land in the universe, all the microclimates in the world are available in India, all the soils are available in India and in abundance. Now what we don't have, uh, which is working against productivity, is the application of technology. We have all the technologies in the world. You name what the problem needs, the technology is already in existence, 90, 95% in India, 5-7% around the world. So one of the key problems, and I'll link it up again with what we are doing, is not the creation of technology, but the deployment of technology. And uh, we have, as a society, as policy, we have uh, we've visibly failed in the last 16, 70, 60, 70 years. And we, we keep talking about the Green Revolution and the Second Green Revolution. I don't even believe the first one happened. I mean, what does it take to bring a seed from somewhere, plant it somewhere else, and call it a, a revolution? Look at the entire mechanism of the delivery of extension services. I hesitate to even say it's moth eaten. Or it means some part of the fabric is left. Here there is no fabric left, right? So that is my second comment. You talked about arable land increasing at 5%. My on take on an aggregate level. Uh, my, my take is even that's not going to happen. So you have a productivity problem that we need to solve. We've got to produce higher amounts of food on the same and declining land. Industry will take it away. The residential will happen. Roads will happen. Right? As, as our civilization grows. So it sort of accentuates the problem. And the last point that I want to comment on is the perishability. We lose a huge, use. people have talked about billions of dollars, 72,000 crores, 120,000 crores. The fact is, we rely on God to preserve our produce. And the God is kind of relying on us to bring in technology to preserve the produce. and uh, and. Technologies are available. For example, take milk. We are still, in fact, most of the world is still looking at pasteurization and preservation of milk using the vector of uh, heat energy, right? So either you boil it to 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 uh, pasteurize it, or you cool it to keep keep it in that state, right? The world is going beyond that. You what about a situation? It's already in existence where you're able to pasteurize and preserve without refrigeration. Just think of the amount of freon and, and uh, unfriendly gases and the energy that you take away. Technologies are here and they should be in India very, very soon. So can you think about a milk system where cooling is not the answer? You take away the entire cold chain and you sort of preserve and pack where it is consumed and produced for the same thing. Now let me just shift to what we are doing. I'm sorry, these are comments on that. That's, that's I apologize the for because as you were speaking, I was busy jotting down saying, hang on, there's a little more here than we might be aware. Uh, what are we doing? Uh, to begin with, what is the opportunity in agriculture? So some opportunities are already kind of done with. Um, take the inputs opportunity, seeds, fertilizers, da da da. It's a $50 billion opportunity. The industry is mature, right? So opportunities. There. Equipment application, non-existent, except at a very informal level. A $70 billion opportunity, current market size near zero, right? Now, can technology fill the gap? Yes, and that is an area. Output saving, we talked about wastage and so on. I just picked up some numbers, anything from 20 to $30 billion. 
an area which is crying for uh, attention in agriculture is to even out the cash cycle of the farmer. The, the f in cash, there's, there's famine and there's feast, or sorry, feast and famine, right? And to even that out, you require microcredit and technology behind microcredit. It's a hundred billion dollar opportunity. I'm not saying this, BCG, McKinsey, Government of India, all these guys are talking about. And the biggest waste that we have is government subsidy. So instead of looking at the farmer as a, as a consumer of technical services, there's government that spends that enormous capital in subsidizing where it doesn't need to subsidize, which requires technological inputs to be able to rationalize that subsidy. We don't have a minimum support price for, for vegetables and oil seeds, but we have a massive politically driven MSP regime for uh, paddy and, uh, and wheat. Right? Now, I say all this because this links in back to what I hope to be doing and what we are doing. What we've decided for ourselves is that we will crack open the, uh, the rock that comes between, the rock layer that comes between real demand for the bottom 3 billion uh, in terms of access to technology. Simply put, the Indian farm size is so small Right, an average of five acres. That if you were to take the balance sheet and the PNL account of the average farm, the rock is affordability of equipment and technology. Right, that balance sheet just can't afford it. Now, to drill through that rock, you need to deliver technology and mechanization in a service format. So, for a community that can't buy cars, taxis is the answer. Right? <coughs> Very simply, you you grandly called us the Uber. We are not. We are actually the Meru of agriculture. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Uber is a bad name. Yeah, and you don't you don't want to get banned by government one or two. And Kejriwal is 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 going uh, going after these guys. So we are the Meru of agriculture. What do we do? We 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 are all over in the farm space. We have points of presence. In these points of presence, you call in as a farmer. You call and say, in the suite of services that we have, uh, I want this service for this crop on so and so day. I'll just look on my computer and say, okay, I'll see you at 6 a.m. day after tomorrow. And I know your farm, I know your lack long, I have the technology to do all that. And um, I know what estimates of work are required. This is going to cost you about 8,022 rupees. I'll be there at 6 a.m. day after. Please be ready with the following. Right? So my machines and my operators land up there. We do the job just as Vero would do, get you to the airport. Handheld devices deliver, deliver an invoice. Collect the cash when you go, just like Meru does. Now, what that is doing, it's taking away the capex load of the farmer and turning into an opex load. And because I'm able to drive capacity utilization of farm equipment from a mere four or five percent to 30, 35 percent, that releases, uh, so to speak, the cost, uh, so as to be able to bring it down the cost of human energy. As an example. We can transplant, we can seed uh, and transplant one acre of uh, rice at three and a half thousand rupees compared to human cost of five thousand rupees with a delivery of 30 to 35 percent further increase in productivity per acre in quintals per acre. So essentially uh, that is what we do uh, as an introduction to us. Thanks, thanks a lot uh, Mr. Bal for sharing this uh, valuable insight. And one of the reasons why, you know, the, uh, for low Indian productivity, farm productivity, is actually lack of investment. And uh, what we are doing is actually trying to address that. Bigger, bigger, one of the biggest problems in, in, in Indian productivity. If I might make a comment to that, uh, I don't think uh, money is a constraint at all. Are, are you, I mean, all of us are aware, uh, India interest rates being what they are, and coming down slightly, uh, makes money affordable. The Western world is swimming in money at half a percent price of money, right? Exactly. So money around the world is not a problem. If there is a constraint in some market models, technology exactly. is not a exactly. problem. We don't have to develop it. Somewhere around the world, somebody has invented and reinvented the wheel. So uh, in agriculture, particularly, I'm I'm constrained. Uh, I'm constrained to sort of say mm -hmm. this. If you're going to go back to the Indian socialist era that says you know self-sufficiency means that I'm going to develop everything from the ground up. That's not the way. Somewhere across some border, it's a
It's about collaboration. 